All right, what is your favorite place then to go to lunch? Ooh, I will not answer it like that. No, uh-uh. Okay, I would say like, uh, nope. Asheville has a, a, an array of wonderful places to eat and enjoy. No, can't get it, sorry, I'm on pride out of me. In order to tell the story about how I became mayor, I gotta tell you about when I became a member of the city council. In 1998, I decided, you know, maybe I should look into city government, and I was like, no. Nah. But the thing that pushed me was the issue of education and not seeing enough diversity in the number of students who were graduating from my local high school. And I knew I didn't want to serve on a school board because I couldn't choose who would serve on a school board with me. So I knew that in order to make a decision to, that would positively Im impact education, I need to be the one who appointed the school board. And so I decided I would run for city council and I just work with our community and work with key leaders to say, you know, I believe that I have something to offer. So I served on city council for six years prior to becoming mayor of the city of Asheville. And when I decided to run for mayor, I was a sitting council member, and I was running up against another council member and the sitting mayor. And I just felt like I could lead our city in a good direction. I could work with the state, and I could work with the federal government. I could really help push Asheville forward. For us, it's important that we work closely with our federal and state legislators, and specifically our state legislators, because North Carolina is not a home rule state. And so we don't make our own decisions in a lot of regards. If it's not explicitly written in our charter, if it's not already legislated, we can't do it. And so if we don't have that authority, we have to go to Raleigh to our le state legislators to get the authority to do whether it's green building incentives. In the movement of making sure that things are more sustainable, that we're not relying on foreign oil, that our policies support the environment and not causing hindrances to the environment, you would think, well, you can just create green incentives to get the type of building that you want. Well, we couldn't. We had to go to Raleigh to make sure that our state legislators gave us the authority and the approval to do such. And so that's why it's important that we work closely with them in order to get the type of legislation that we want to support where we want to go as a city. Prior to our legislators going into session, the city of Asheville gets together with our city attorney to, to talk about what are our key priorities when it comes to state legislation and state, you know, we want to see an increase in funding in certain areas, we want to see some changes in our building practices, we want to make sure that we have the opportunity to get additional authority for different areas of our, of our community. So we work prior to the session started and we'll meet with our legislators before then to give them some general information and then when they go to Raleigh and they kind of see the lay of the land what's happening we'll provide additional information and we'll continue to give updates and let them know what's going on we'll continue to meet with them and talk to them to ensure that we're getting the legislation passed that we would like to see passed. Okay. I think it's important for North Carolinians and especially for people in Asheville to know that there's a difference in the different layers of government. There are some things the city of Asheville does not do. One of them would be health and human services. I have people who will write me long letters about issues they have with the Department of Social Services, and my heart goes out to them, because I'm thinking, wow, I would never want to be in that situation. However, my hands are tied when it comes to direct policy influence, because that's the county government not city government, whereas if, as if an individual has a problem with a street in the city of Asheville, that's city government. That's our job to deal with potholes, to deal with sidewalks, to deal with those issues. If they have a problem with our health department, whether it's not getting a service, whether it's waiting in line, or whether it's, you know, they ran out of a certain shot, that's county government, not city government. If individuals have a problem with the court system, they're having problems getting a case heard, they have a problem with a particular public defender, that's not the city of Asheville, that's the state and or the county. And so helping people to understand that the different layers of government, we're here to support the community, we're here to support the citizens, we're here to support the individuals who pay our paychecks as city government and county government, state government. However, we do have different roles, and I think that's important. I would want them to understand the different layers of city government, different layers of county government, different layers of state government, and what we all do under our layer. Most people don't realize that city council 
we deal with land use policies on a regular basis. So we talk about zoning issues. We talk about where apartments should go, where restaurants should go. And people will not come out and vote at municipal elections, but they'll vote for the president. And their policies are national in nature, and they have a trickle-down impact. But city government, municipal elections are so important because they impact people on a day-to-day -day basis.